Hey guys, so we're continuing the troubleshooting process. I couldn't find a 5 oil filled, so what I decided to do was to test it with the 4 to see um, to see uh, uh, how that worked, because theoretically it should work perfectly with a 4, just a hair slow. So what I did is I put the wired the 4 in and uh, plugged it in and checked it out, and it still was doing the same thing. So, uh, I said to myself, I said, well, there's only a few things that could still be the case. Um, because if it's not the capacitor, it's either one of the connections to the capacitor, or it's, uh, the, one of the motor coils. And, uh, the motor coils are very unlikely unless there's physical damage to the motor, or it got burned up. <clears throat> and, uh, neither of those seem to be the case. So I traced, uh, all the wire leads from the capacitor, and found out that the black lead here, the individual black lead, um, was supposed to be connected to the reverse switch, but it had come disconnected. So, then when I power it up now, it seems like it works perfectly. And we'll try, where's the reverse switch? We'll try reversing it. Did it go the other way? Yep. So, because that 5 capacitor was leaky, looking at least, but tested good. Let's try it again with the 5. I'm going to try to crop the camera. Oh, that's just the canopy. You don't need to see that. So let's disconnect the 4. I'm going to go get the 5 from over there by the capacitor tester. If I had a... There's more high-tech capacitor testers that can test for leakage and test for other things. Mine is very basic. Mine was $11 on eBay, if that gives you an indication of how basic. So... Okay, let's power it up, and it runs fine with the original capacitor. So it was in fact not a bad capacitor, but a bad connection to the capacitor. So I hope this has been a uh, good lesson in troubleshooting, and uh, I'm going to see if I have time to put this together and hang it up.